Hey y'all, welcome back to Born to Barbecue. My name is Spencer. Today, we're gonna be doing some outdoor cooking. What I've got in front of me is a cousin to what is popularly known as dino ribs very popular texas ribs these are the four bone version these are not the three bone version just happened to be what i could get at my local butcher shop this week we are going to be going through a very light trim and going to be seasoning it up come in a little bit closer i'll show you guys what we're going to be doing and we're going to get these things on the smoker all right y'all we're about to be cooking these up in the pellet grill for the next six hours or so 300 degrees and we are going to be having some ribs for dinner. I'm going to show you guys how we're trimming them, what we're going to do, how we're going to prep them, and we're going to throw them in the grill. So we're going to start off cutting off some of these sides. We're just going to get very light trim today. Nothing crazy. Some of these sides can be a little too pointy. Like I said in the last video, and like I'll say in probably pretty much every video, aerodynamics, guys. Aerodynamics. We've got to have it. So, again, nothing crazy. Just a little snip here, a little snip there. We just want it light. We don't want it heavy. This one's kind of giving me a little bit of trouble, huh? There we go. All right. All right, we got our edges. Kind of round it up. Get this one. Beautiful. You could take some of this fat off the top cap if you want to. I'm just going to trim a light trim. We're not going to take too much off. We're just going to want to take the stuff off that's like bulky. Looks like it just doesn't belong there, right? So very light trim, not wanting to get too, too crazy. And again, aerodynamics, guys, aerodynamics. Just gonna try and get these to be nice and smooth when you rub your hands across the top. So any of these high spots in the fat, we're gonna wanna cut down and take off. Most of this will render down, but if you have too much on there, it won't render down. Then you'll be left with just like not a, not a great bite, right? You hear me often say that sharp bite, not a good bite. We obviously want good presentation. We also want good flavor and we want the, the actual enjoyment of eating the rib itself to be there as well. Cause if you can't enjoy the food you're cooking, even if it tastes good, if it's got some issues when you're biting into it, where it's maybe too chewy or maybe overly tender and has like a pot roast kind of feel, that's not going to work. So this is all we're doing. I'm going to flip these babies over to the back. We're just going to score the back side. This is so that the membrane still holds the ribs together, but we don't have to worry about pulling it off. We're cooking this hot enough. This membrane is going to end up perfectly fine. There won't be need to be a whole lot done to it. And there you have it. About to season these babies up. So as a binder today, we're going to be using some of the W sauce from Baron Burton. It is a phenomenal Worcestershire sauce. Just going to get a light drizzle in the middle and we're going to just rub it in this is going to help our seasonings adhere really get that nice bond to the meat we're going very very different on seasoning today guys we're not doing anything crazy we're not going some fancy fancy blend we are going three very simple ingredients one extremely controversial ingredient i'm gonna show you guys what we've got you know stick with me i know this is about to seem wild but this is what we're going to do we have some kosher salt, coarse grade. We've got 16 mesh black pepper, the black pepper of the barbecue world. And last but not least, the most contro controversial ingredient that we have, MSG. Now I know you guys probably just wanna turn it off right now. Don't do it, don't do it. This is gonna be the best set of plate ribs you've probably ever had in your entire life. What we're gonna do is, we're going to give ourselves a heavy dusting of coarse black pepper first this is what's going to help form our bark be generous be very very generous because we're not going a lot of ingredients and we're only relying on the texas holy combination as i guess you could put it we're going to rely more on this pepper to give us that bark all right really want that good good bonding that adhesion of the, of the pepper into the meat this is optional i'm just gonna get the edges it's not necessarily required as much as it would be on a different cut of meat some people might disagree with me on that i don't think it's exactly just 
absolutely necessary. There's not a ton of meat on the outsides of these bones typically, um, especially once they start to cook down, they really scrunch together. It's up to you how you, how you want to go about doing it. You can dust a little bit more on this if you want. This is a little bit more important than the other side because this is where the meat is. And then sometimes I'll just make myself a line like that and toss it in. All right, as you guys can see, very heavy pepper application. In fact, we're going to go a little bit more. Just kind of lost a little bit just now. Then we're going to put some salt on the top of this. We're doing a combination mix between salt and MSG. So we're not going to go terribly heavy on the salt. Light dusting, very light dusting. Again, push that in. Make sure you're not getting too much in some spots and not enough in others. I know some people probably think that, that was way too much salt. This is a big chunk of meat. It can handle a decent bit of salt. But where we are going to be relying on today, it's going to be our MSG. I know. I know. I've probably, probably lost quite a few of you guys already because... Our arteries are going to clog and we're all going to die. You know, we've had studies come out since the big MSG study saying that MSG is not as bad in moderation as we all thought. And guys, we're eating barbecue. We're making a freaking four pound plate of ribs. We're not going for healthy. We're going for flavor. We're absolutely going for flavor. So with this wind died down on me, kind of just spread it around MSG is going to be what helps us add in that extra layer of flavor. So we're going a little bit more MSG heavy than we did salt heavy because that is what we're going to use to drive in flavor inside the meat. All right, we're going to let this sit while the smoker comes up to temp and then toss this baby on there. All right, y'all, as promised, we're putting these babies on the grill. I'm gonna put them away from direct heat. On my pit boss, I have heat straight in the middle. So I'm gonna offset that so these things don't get too crispy and hopefully get even cooking. Now it's worth noting, you don't have to do this on a pellet grill. You could do this in a Kamado Joe, like a green egg. Uh, you could do this inside an offset smoker, a vertical smoker. It does not have to just be this exact brand of smoker. It doesn't even have to be a pellet grill whatever you've got you can definitely use it's just about tweaking things to your liking you could go a little bit slower if you've got longer time to cook you could take things slower you don't necessarily have to go as slow or as fast as what other people do really up to what your time limitations are all right y'all we're not doing anything too crazy to these ribs we're just taking some beef bouillon that i mixed up in a spray bottle and every couple hours or so probably every hour and a half really just when the ribs are looking dry we're going to do a light spritz over the top don't want to mess up our bark so we're not going to go too heavy of an application just enough to keep the ribs moist throughout the cook That's some shit, y'all, huh? Jesus Christ. All right, y'all. These babies are temping in the 200s. We pulled them off. We're about to hit this with some of my beef bouillon spray. Just help keep them moist while they're down. And we got them wrapped, cooling. We're going to put these things face down. Yeah. Had a little flare up, but not a problem. We're going to keep these wrapped until heat pull off of them. Let the juices redistribute. Get that whole spill going on. We're going to do that. And then they'll be ready to eat. All right, y'all. We got these things rested. Time to open them up. Flip them. Cut them. Eat them. All the good stuff. Mm. Because you've got the bones the way they fit, I'm going to cut at an angle. This first one, we're going to cut down like that so that way we end up with a nice chunk on there right all right I'm gonna get real close to that bone as close as you can oh my god that looks phenomenal oh my gosh 
The smell's amazing. You think about it, it tastes amazing. This is the juice coming off of that guy. It's like, oh my gosh. I know we don't squeeze the meat, you know, but look at this. Look. <laughs> that is ridiculous. One more time for the one time. Look at that. Oh my god, that is ridiculous.